What is up you guys, Dennis Garcia here. How the hell is everybody doing? I am doing fantastic. Today it is August 23rd and it has officially been two days since my 31st birthday. And uh, I am coming on camera today with no vlog in hand and explaining to you guys why there is no birthday vlog. And it's a very simple answer. Uh, I was just having such a great time with my cousin that I literally forgot to film anything. But I had a great time with my cousin Lauren and her husband Andrew. I haven't seen my cousin in over a year and a half since our little disagreement back in December of 2021. Um, and it was nice catching up with her. It was nice being with her. It, it's as if nothing had happened. Like she got here and it wasn't awkward or anything. It was literally like nothing had ever happened between us. And Saturday, we just kind of spent the morning and afternoon just being lazy, not really doing anything. And then we all got dressed, ready, and we headed out to go eat on Saturday night. And then on Sunday, me and my cousin drove to Dutch Bros in the morning to go get my free coffee, my free birthday coffee. And uh, then we had some lunch at McDonald's and Jack in the Box. And then she went home around like three o'clock in the afternoon, four o'clock in the afternoon. And that was that was a whole weekend. Um, so I didn't really film anything because there really wasn't anything to film. We were all tired the whole weekend. She like got here at four in the morning on Friday night or Friday morning, Saturday morning, I guess. And then she, woke up at like six o'clock in the morning to go to church. She came back home like at nine in the morning, took like a two hour nap, and we were just all tired. We were just all tired all weekend, running on no sleep. Uh, I also have my coffee, which is now watering down a little, uh, because you know your bitch needs to be caffeinated. Yesterday, I actually didn't have coffee at all, because on Sunday, when I got back from fucking Dutch Bros, I got like a cold pour, large ass, no ice, full drink with two extra shots of espresso. And I was just like all coffeeed out. I was like, I can't drink coffee no more. So yesterday, Monday, was yesterday Monday? Yeah, yesterday was Monday. Um, I was just like, no caffeine today. I'm good, I'm good. The reason why I wanted to come here and make this video is because something did happen. Uh, on my birthday. And it's something that's a reoccurring segment on my birthday where my mom just fucking does something and makes me regret ever forgiving her for all the shit she does because it seems like no matter no matter how many times I forgive her or how many times I stop talking to her and how many times I let her know what she says and what she does is fucked up she doesn't change. And this is the last straw for me. Like I have forgiven her time and time again, years. She's done so much shit talking over the years. And she, as we all know, tried to assault me on my birthday last year when she was belligerently drunk. And I stopped talking to her for about two to three months, four months. And I forgave her because she's my mother. But at a certain point, there is only so much pain that a family member can cause you before you're finally like done, even if it is my own mother. Um, so let's talk about it. <laughs> so on Sunday, the night of my birthday, she was downstairs in the garage talking to her sister, my aunt, and drinking. I guess she got a little too drunk and around 11 o'clock at night on my birthday, she was headed up the stairs, stumbling a little, talking very loud because she's a very loud talker. She doesn't know what whispering means. Um, and, she, and I heard her talking first about me and my cousin Lauren and basically talking shit about Lauren and about some of the stuff that her mom had told my mom in confidence. Um, and here she was chismeando, telling her sister everything. And she was basically saying how Lauren's a little asshole and how I'm a little asshole. And so she went into her bedroom, she closed the door. I was pretending to be asleep because as soon as I heard her talking shit, I was like, 
Let's see if she keeps going when she gets into the room. So I pretended to be asleep. And yeah, she closed the, the, the door to her bedroom, which is right next to mine. And you can hear everything. The walls are thin here and she's a loud talker. So you can literally hear her say everything. And so I'm just there sitting up in my room in the dark, listening to my mom talk shit about me. And she was basically talking about how I'm 31 and how I still live here with her and that I should start my own life. When let's, let's just, let's just kind of dissect that a little bit. So she's talking on the phone with her sister. Her sister has a daughter. Her daughter is like 36 years old. Her daughter has a husband and two kids. Her daughter, her husband, and her two kids live with their mother, my aunt, my mom's sister. So how hypocritical is it of you to say that I'm 31 and still living at home when the person you're talking to about me also has a daughter who is 36, lives with her mom at home with two kids and a husband. Second, um, you told me that it was okay for me to come live back here because of the pandemic. Because at the time I had lost my job and I had lost my apartment and I was on the verge of getting another job. And you said, it would be better if we all just live under the same roof so that we can all help each other. So that you're not struggling trying to pay a house and I'm not struggling trying to pay an apartment for myself. I thought that was a great idea. I thought instead of me living with roommates or strangers or people I don't know, I would come back home. You help me, I help you. But it's clear that that is not the case because apparently she doesn't want me to live here anymore. Uh, which is fine, you know, I have overstayed my welcome here and um, she has nothing to worry about. I'm gonna, as soon as I start my job next month, uh, I'm gonna start to save some checks and try to find a studio of my own. And if not, I'll find a roommate, I'll find a friend, I'll move in with a stranger. At this point, I don't really fucking care. I am just ready to get out. <laughs> um, and then she had the uh, audacity to call me materialistic and that I spend all my money on stupid, expensive things. Well, let's dissect that for a second. She mentions my chair, which I am currently sitting on. Uh, I, I spent around $180 on my chair. It is a Lombardi mo mid-century modern chair, leather very comfy and the reason why i bought this chair is because i'm going to be working from home for eight hours a day and i wanted something comfy i can't buy a 50 dollar desk chair and have it be comfy there's no cheap comfy chair comfy chairs are like 150 and up so in order for me to be able to have a productive work from home environment where my back isn't hurting from sitting on a crappy chair, I need to invest. And then she started talking about, well, I don't know how much he spent on his, on his uh, work desk, but it can't be fucking cheap. First of all, the desk that I have is a Target desk. I got it on sale for $90. So the desk wasn't expensive at all. And yeah, I like buying quality pieces that I know are going to last me a long time. Hence, my coach flight bag, my coach backpack, both I use often. And my coach, um, my coach travel bag, which I use often whenever I travel. Like these are pieces that I'm going to have for years that are going to last me, that are made uh, that are made with quality materials. Like I'm not buying a cheap ass bag from Target that's gonna break apart in a year or two. These are gonna last me for years. My camera, my equipment, my computer, 
These are all things that I need for my hobbies and my passions to be able to fulfill and make quality content, make quality, take quality photos, take quality videos. Like these are all things that I need in order to be able to do what I, what it is that I want to do. Let's turn the tables around mother. Let's talk about you. If you walk into her room, her room is filled with bags, purses, backpacks, shoes. The amount of shoes she has is crazy. I have at most nine pairs of shoes, two boots, five pairs of Converse, Reeboks, and a pair of Vans. That's it. She has mountains of shoes in her closet, mountains of clothes. And if you come out of our hallway and you look to your left, there are plastic bins, like huge plastic bins, full of clothes that she doesn't wear, full of shoes that she doesn't use, and just full of shit that's been sitting in these plastic storage bins for at least two years now. Because before I came back home, this room was a storage room of her clothes. So she had one closet, she had two closets, and then she had a bunch of shit in here but we're not done. Walk downstairs and we have two living rooms, which is her little like makeshift studio where she keeps her like heat press, her crew gut, her, all her like materials for her hobbies and her passions. So you also have a hobby and a passion and I'm sure that heat press was not cheap. All those printers weren't cheap. The crew cut machine wasn't cheap. All of the materials you have aren't cheap. I have a camera, a laptop, lights, and a tripod. But yet, I'm the materialistic one. Got it. So I don't know. She was just talking mad shit about me, mad shit about Lauren. And so I told Lauren, I was like, hey, just FYI, my mom is talking mad shit about you. Uh, and she's talking mad shit about me. And do with that information as you will. If you wanna confront your mom, go for it uh and i confronted my mom i basically told her i was like oh so i'm a little asshole huh and i'm materialistic here are the facts mary and uh right after i texted her i like immediately blocked her because i know she was just gonna make up excuses or try to put the blame on me she's a very good gaslighter my mother's a very good gaslighter she's on the verge of being narcissistic she's not but she's a damn good gaslighter. She will gaslight the shit out of you and you'll believe it. And it's, it's, it's taken me a long time to learn her behaviors and learn her pattern and learn how she is. Um, and I've come to the conclusion that she is a toxic mother and she is a gaslighter. And the amount of times that I have heard from other people say that she's talked shit about me and I never believed it is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's, it's a great amount. And to actually hear it for the first time myself, uh, it hurt. I'm not going to lie and say that I was not hurt by the fact that my mom, my own mother was talking shit about me. Um, it hurt. It hurt. It hurt a lot. But but ever since last year, like, like I don't, I don't hurt cry anymore. I don't cry anymore. I don't, it hurts me because she's my mom and she's like that one person that you're supposed to trust and that's supposed to unconditionally love you. And she doesn't, she doesn't unconditionally love me. Like, you don't talk shit about your kids. You just don't. Like, you don't talk shit about your kids to other people. It's just, it's just not something you don't do. And the fact that she had the balls to even say that when I'm in the room next to her just means that she has no disregard for if I, if I, if I, if I, if I, if I even hear or not. Like, she doesn't give a fuck if I hear. She always says it. She says, I don't, fucking I don't fucking care who hears me. I don't fucking care. I tell the truth. I speak my truth and I'm not gonna hold back. Hello, old lady, 
I heard your truth. I heard it loud and fucking clear. And I actually just checked my laptop. And even though I have her blocked on my phone, her text messages did come through on my laptop. Didn't want to read them. Didn't want to deal with them. Didn't want to deal with reading them and then becoming angry because I don't want to be angry. I just want her to leave me alone and for her to stop talking shit about me and just to let me live my life. And I feel like that's hard to do while I'm still living here. And I want to so badly to just sell my, my, my computer, just fucking sell my camera, sell everything that I own and just fucking move. But I don't want to sell my camera. I'm gonna have to suck it up until I start my new job and and just, I don't know, move out when I get my first two paychecks. I just want, I just want out of here. I want out of here. I, I don't wanna be here anymore. Um, it's such a toxic environment and it's like, sh she makes it so hard for me to just ignore her and just live my life here because she's so insistent on talking to you talking shit about you and like trying to get a rise out of you. She's very good at getting a rise out of you. Um, I don't know. She loves the drama, I guess. But yeah, that is that on uh, the birthday vlog and why there isn't a birthday vlog and what happened because my mom doesn't know how to keep her mouth shut and she's always like, stop posting about you know, what the the whole family problems onto your fucking channel. Well, stop talking shit about me to your sister and everybody else. Like, it's a two-way street, mother. You stop talking shit about me. You stop trying to assault me on my birthday. And I won't talk shit about you to my YouTube channel, to my 130 subscribers. It's how it works. So... So long as she does things to me, I'm gonna keep talking about them because it's my YouTube channel. It's my story to tell. It's my life. And what she's doing affects my life and how I feel. But I'm gonna go finish my coffee. I'm gonna edit this video and then I'm gonna upload it and I will see you guys on the next video, which I don't know when it'll be. But uh, I hope you guys are all having a good day and a good week and a good month and a good year and a good life and I will see you guys on the next one.